I said it to Mabel, I said, <laughs> <laughs> I am Otis Roper. I am Brandon Roper. And together we are still the Super Roper Brothers. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Good to be back. Um, it might be obvious what we're reviewing today based on our uh, head here. Martin Scorsese's The Departed. Yes, we're going to be talking about The Departed. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, a new film out by Illumination, which I was surprised by because I don't really like the studio that much, but hey, they made a good movie. finally settle on husband and wife director duo Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel, who were best known for creating the Max Headroom character back in the 80s. Skins was quoted in 2007 saying, It was a f nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. It had a husband and wife team directing whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. After so many weeks, their own agent told them to get off the set. F nightmare. And Hoskins is not wrong. Morton and Jenkel were asked to step away toward the end of the project and the production companies had to come in and help wrap everything up. So if the pacing feels off or some plot points feel rushed, it's because this is the combination of at least five different scripts. In the middle of all making this, they decided they didn't want to use anything of it other than the characters of Mario, Luigi, and the character of King Koopa and all this. And so they just had this hodgepodge of dissonance where nobody's getting along, nobody's communicating, but the movie has to get filmed. Yeah, it, it, it was horrible. Which is why that sequel is never going to happen. Wait, okay. oh, they're, uh, I, oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah, to be continued. They had to, to be continued come in, and they were like, we're going to do it. Yeah, no, no. And if it happens, if it happens, if that happens, but Firefly couldn't continue, Man, look, I don't, don't want to be here. I don't want to exist. So anyway, we are reviewing the movie Super Mario, which we haven't talked about yet because we were so busy talking about how terrible the other one was. But we are going to be talking about the film Super Mario Brothers, the movie um, just came out. Not sure if you know who I am, but I'm about to rule the world. Wow, uh, <laughs> yay. But there's one problem. There's a human has a mustache just like you. <laughs> Do you think I know every human being with a mustache wearing an identical outfit with a hat with the letter of his first name on it? <laughs> because I don't. Three directors? Three directors. Yeah, three directors in the movie. Um, it was actually pretty well done. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you can kind of see it. It's uh, Aaron Horvath, Michael Jelnick, and Pierre Leduc. All three of them directed this movie. And you can kind of see that each one probably had their hand on a different part of the story. Um, but they did a really good job of merging together a bunch of different Mario origins, a bunch of different Mario games a bunch of different Mario iconography into a coherent storyline. It's not easy to do video game in the film. It's really not. And honestly, of the last like three or four years, they've gotten, for the, for, like, the first time ever, 
there have been multiple good video game like realization properties from The Last of Us to this to uh, even uh, The Last Mortal Kombat wasn't terrible. But here's what they do usually they take something like the Mortal Kombat one, I'm glad you brought that up, and you take a cool character like Scorpion. Yeah. You sell the movie on based on him. Yeah. And then that movie ain't got nothing to do with nah, like you're just like in the movie. yo, that's not okay, that's not okay. I think that for the first time ever, as far as video game translations one, this one hits the nail on the head because they stay in their lane. It's Mario, it's Nintendo, it's iconic. There's fan service to beat the band. There's a, the website that actually ends up being, if yeah. you go look up, it's a real website. Yeah, the website for, the, for their stuff and the plumbing company. Oh, we're the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. When your sink is in trouble, you could call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Huh. Thank you, Super Mario Bros. It seems like the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. For super service, call or text Super Mario Bros. Plumbing today at 929-55-MARIO or reach us on the World Wide Web at smbplumbing.com. It's, it all works. And they stay in what they're talking about. And so whoever is at Nintendo, that made sure you're never gonna abuse our property ever again like this until you get it right. Thank you for holding and sticking to your guns because you made this movie better than it was. I had a way better time than what I thought I was going to. Yeah, me, me too, same, same exact thing. It was very, very, very much the movie that we deserved as children and we did not get. Yeah, man, come on, like, you would think that with movies that just crush our souls, like Transformers the movie, yeah. uh, with like movies that just have scenes in them, just like G.I. Joe, G.I. Yeah. Joe the movie, uh, The Never Ending Story, yeah. uh, all these movies, E.T., like these oh, shocking moments that you would give us something. Yeah. Can we have something? And then they came out of Super Mario Brothers and was like, no, you can't have nothing. Like, yeah. all those years later. No, it was not at all what we were looking for. I mean, that ain't the only one. That's not the only one. Like Captain America that came out in 91. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Ooh. I remember that. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do. Ooh. Gonna put it on. Anyway, so <laughs> Chris Pratt as Mario. Yeah. You I know what? Surprise. Not only was he good, but they explained a certain characteristic about his voice and yeah. why. So we all know that Mario talks like, like in the like, I don't even know what to call it. Like the, like it's the a stereotypical, it's a stereotypical Italian accent. Uh, you know, it's very over the top. It's very much like, you know, this thing. And so in the movie, I mean, I'm, this isn't a spoiler, but in the movie, the way they basically get around that is, Mario and Luigi are real people who live in Brooklyn, and they make a commercial in that accent, using that accent to basically sell their plumbing business. I, you know, I come watch the movie. Go watch the movie, and 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 then we can talk. I, I really think that like once you see the movie, and you know what, and in, in, in all honesty, I think you probably need to watch it twice. I think that on, in all honesty, the answer though is that. This is a passionate fan base, and, and it makes sense. Like, I understand I'm part of it. Wait a minute. You're telling me that two brothers got on camera and were not like themselves in real life? Yeah, I don't know what that's like, because this is exactly how we are all the time. Yeah, but seriously, no. They, they explain the accent, the accent works, and I was perfectly okay with that. Once they had done that, I mean, because they opened the film with it, and... It was so great and that I was like, okay, this makes sense. Yep. Now he doesn't have to talk like that the whole time. Yep. Yep. And now we know exactly why he does it. Not only that, but his Brooklyn accent doesn't go away. It's still throughout the film. He still talks like he's from Brooklyn. He still talks like he's like, you know, a, a first or second generation Italian immigrant kind of, like, or not Italian immigrant, but Italian American. He talks like that. Yeah, and it's fine. It works. Yeah, and he does it in some iconic moments throughout the film. He does what he needs to. But Chris Pratt, it, 
becomes like I, I don't I'm not thinking that's Chris, Chris Platt yeah. playing Mario by yes. the end of it all. By the end of it I forgot who was playing yeah, Mario. It's just that's just Mario. That was just a voice that was just Mario. And so that's okay. Seth Rogen. Oh my god. So Seth Rogen stars in this or as well. He comes in about halfway through the film is the Donkey Kong. And somehow everything Donkey Kong is <laughs> made a lot more sense as as you see him in there. Like this just a dude, bro. Come on, yes. you know the type. And if you don't know the type, then you, you are, are the type. type. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> he does a he does a great job. His goofy little laugh works perfectly as Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> He did a great job. I thought Luigi, played by Charlie Day. Um, Luigi was good. I had a little bit of a quibble about Luigi, but it's not like... I mean, the movie does do justice by him eventually, but... We'll, we'll, Are we gonna gloss over the fact this man just said Chortle? What's wrong with Chortle? No, no, I'm just gonna use this as an opportunity for us to go ahead and present uh, the, the vocabulary of Oh, the definition of what Chortle means. This no problem. <laughs> yes. Come on, Mario. Our big adventure begins now. Ah, get it off, get it off, get it off. There's a huge universe out there with a lot of galaxies. They're all counting on us. About this film was the colors, the lighting. It's so bright. It wasn't. It was vibrant, and it was Nintendo feeling. Yeah. They didn't feel a need, and the reason I didn't bring this up, there was no need to take it with the dark universe. Yeah. The dark, the dark Mario and Mario's universe. Really, greedy Mario movie. Princess Peach is dead. Oh, Mario. To be. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, well, Mario to be. A, he's like a detective, but he's also like a like a ninja. He's like, you know. Like, Really want because he wanted to make a Batman. Yo, couldn't get the rights. Yo, we didn't need. We yeah. didn't need don't, that. Don't make our heroes what they're not. And this movie makes Mario exactly what he is. It was bright. It was colorful. The music was iconic. How many? How many things did you pick out? There's at least like ten different Mario airship movies. theme, Bowser's castle theme. Underwater. You got just the underwater theme. You got all these themes, man. Like basement I'm, theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, too, so. yeah, like beautiful, just. They call it fan service, but I call that just being careful and respecting your audience. Yeah. And not going too far, but just like, hey, listen, if you know about this, if you know, you know. If you get it, you get it. This is a, this is the, uh, you know, this is the soundtrack to your youth. Yeah, yeah. And you don't yeah. want someone to come along and cynically kind of destroy it as a cash grab with the movie. I, I fully understand that. You do not want that to happen. And there are so many hearts and souls and minds dedicated to making sure that doesn't that didn't happen you asked for it this is fun well and the fan service in this one was in service of the plot it wasn't fan service like like when they use the more the mario brothers rap that is in the commercial for the mario brothers plumbing service which makes sense it makes like you just took something that was a previously existing property and you morphed it into this thing that was a necessarily plot element for the rest of the movie. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you make movies. That's how you make movies that are based on something else while paying respect to the other thing. And I thought that was that was clearly on display. Well. Now, the characters that stood out okay. in this movie. We have to talk about the one and the only. Jack Black. Princess Peach at the end of the line. I'll make you mine. Ow. Peaches, 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 peaches. My goodness, dude. Like, now Jack Black is a force of nature yeah. who's basically playing himself. Yes. Whatever he's, he's playing. Which is, he, he has, Jack Black, okay, so I feel like this is something we have to talk about with Jack Black. Jack Black's real profession is basically being like a joke rock star. Like he jokes, but he also like sings and has this crazy iconic rock voice that he uses in the band Tenacious D. If you don't know who that is, look it up. The D, yes. So Tenacious D is basically Jack Black's like Jack Black's real life like 
passion project that he does. And I feel like he almost does acting on the side. <laughs> he's that good, but he's yeah. that good to do that. Uh, yeah. Piece of Kyle Gass too, by the way, being oh, a man, the man. reason why I won't go near a guitar because people man. like you exist. Kyle Gass is crazy good. He doesn't look anything like a rock star, <laughs> but he's a rock star. Oh man, <laughs> man he's a rock star. So Jack Black breaks his foot off in the delivery of uh, Bowser and. Now, Bowser has been my character for the longest, uh, you know, the longest time. He's always been one I'm just like, you know, because I saw the I saw princess, you know. <laughs> so, so I got, I love you, baby, wherever you are. Just wherever, be, wherever she you may be. Wherever you know that she could be anywhere. See, like, either in here, either in there, wherever you are. <laughs> but I, <laughs> the piece of that guy's fault. <laughs> but uh, also, a uh, character that stood out that I liked a lot for what they did not, this star. <laughs> the little, the yeah, little, the little, 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 yeah, the nihilism, nihil <laughs> like, like, flame or whatever it was. There's gotta be a way out of here. There's no escape. The only hope is the sweet relief from death. Whoa! Oh, oh you've got to be oh. kidding me! <laughs> I said, I'm not here to preach to you, but I'm trying to tell you this. The last thing you need when you're stuck in a cage <laughs> and all hope is gone is your nihilism. <laughs> so, so, that's the reason why this is. Hilarious. Was, or that was that was a funny element just stuck just there. Just a funny out of nowhere. Adult element. Yeah. In this kids movie, kids kids aren't gonna be picking up on that one. No. That's for you grown ups. That's for you adults. I tell you what though, this movie does not shy away from the threat of death. They say the word dead, die, death, all throughout it. And Which I'm okay with because I love. as a kid, you know what? I know what's gonna happen to the bad guy. Or the, when the bad guy wins. That's kind of the overarching threat of everything. Hey, what happens if you don't make the jump on Mario? Uh, you die. <gasps> Wait, that means you, what happens if you die? No time. You lose the game. The game's over? Yes. You mean that's a, a life lesson? Yes. We understood the concept of death the moment we watched all the Autobots get murdered in the first seven or eight minutes of Transformers. Oh. Megatron! Decepticons! Dynamic in a storyline when you've got a character that can do everything the hero can do 
that's been there and you're just like, well, why did they just do it? Yeah, it's like if Mario listens to Nucky Few Buck on repeat, then Princess Peach wrote and produced the song. She was the inspiration of yes. why the song was written. Like, she is overpowered until she just doesn't want to be for some reason or just doesn't decide to be. At the end of the movie, what stops her from doing exactly what Mario did? We don't know. And that's that's a good question. But, but, like, I know, I, I understand the point you were making about Mario, you know, never giving up, all, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just consistency even in the face of overwhelming force. That's a good, that's a character trait. And I like that that was expanded upon. But, like I said, what makes Peach not be able to do any of that? Bowser is coming. Together, we... Are going to stop that monster. But I don't want people to come away thinking that we're like, ah, we didn't like her. No, that's not what we're saying. We're film critics. We're supposed to look at this from the whole. Yeah, this is just an objective like story point of view. I mean, if there was, if if Obi Wan Kenobi showed up at you know to to rescue Luke Skywalker, and he already has a young apprentice who's father was a powerful Jedi, you'd be like, well, what was that Luke guy there for? <laughs> you, like, you, would, you would ask those questions. And then that guy conveniently sat out the rest of the movie and while the other person, like while Luke took took charge and did everything, you'd be like, well, that was kind of weird to have a person who was already ready to do what Luke did by the end. Yeah, and that's what I said. She was just a little bit overpowered as far as that, but, you know, um, one of the things I love about it, you touched on it before, I love they left the violence yeah. And it went, you guess, oh, oh, no, no, no. People got punched. Yeah. People got face. People got kicked. People got thrown down. Yeah. Because you know what? That's what happens in Super Smash Brothers. It's what happens in just stuff. And I know that we have this now. We're A lot of people have this, like, over idea of, uh, you know, we don't want to teach people this. We don't want to teach people to hit. We don't want to teach people that. Look, I grew up in an age where we watched Big Mutant Turtles beat the brakes off of regular people. Okay, regular right. people like go like in, in the movie, especially they were the children. The ninety one movie, yeah, they were like they're teenagers, and the turtles are just beating them, <laughs> just beating them yeah. in the face. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and so I'm totally okay. <laughs> like, listen, and guess, guess what? We also learned. We learned that if we did that to anyone, our parents would, in fact, like, oh, my best to maybe push the earth out of orbit. Man, I'm saying. So we learned what not to do. About like, the idea isn't. That kids know that there's violence in the world and don't know there's violence in the world. It's that they know when to use it and when to not use it. <gasps> the idea is to teach them right from wrong. It's not that they're like, you know, oh my god, they know how to punch. It's do they punch the weak? Are they punching the helpless? That's wrong. Like, are, are like, you know, like, are they learning how to punch to, just, to be more disciplined? But like, that's right. So it, it worked for me. It, I mean, yeah, you know, not only is it crying. So yeah. So that was great. Um, I thought, you know, the Rainbow Road. Oh yeah. yeah. Rainbow Road it makes an appearance. If you've ever played any Super Smash Brothers, you definitely know the iconic Rainbow Road. And probably you either love it or you hate it. Um, you talking about uh, Smash Bros or Mario Kart? Mario Kart. Sorry. Do you believe that this film will generate a Nintendo universe? Um, if it does, I want them to make sure that they keep tight control over it. I don't want to see somebody's interpretation of this uh, other than the original uh, creator. Or whatever. Yeah. So, so if it does become a Mario universe, I want it to be kept in control. I want it to be the, the this is the vision I believe we should get on Miyamoto. Do you think that they will attempt to make it a Super Smash universe, or because I want to see a Legend of Zelda film badly, but how did you make that a film? I tell you what, then the, the only way that that can happen is they have to make these different Nintendo properties first. Yes. And then bring them together in Smash Bros. like a Smash, if they're going to do a Smash Bros. movie. Or at least make these independent and then maybe like Mario, the second or third one, have a crossover event where there's like a tournament and then there's, it just happens to be in the movie. So hopefully, I mean, what do you guys think? Like, you know, hey, listen, 
this isn't just me and him talking together. This is you. What do you think about the Mario universe? Did you enjoy the film? Have you seen it? Do you plan on seeing it? Are you going to the theater again yet? Oh, uh, yeah. I thought it was, uh, listen, I, I mean, honestly, as a film, if I had to give it, you know, what, are we going to do one to five stars? I would give this movie five stars for being a Mario Brothers film. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. For being a Mario Brothers, a Nintendo film. Yeah. This is five stars. For being a movie. Yeah. A movie. Yeah. For the target audience, I would give this a five stars. Because I don't have to take my children to see this and worry about anything of them seeing or anything going like, no, that's not the Nintendo. That's not the... That's not the way that this works. That's not according to the story. Everything in here was a perfect blend. It's the movie we deserved 30 years ago, but yeah, we didn't get. We didn't get. It. And yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I'd say it's a five star movie for it, it's a five star movie for, for what it does, for what it is, for exactly what it was trying to do, yep. and for the spirit in which it was executed, which was hey, let's make Mario on screen. Let's yeah. not take let's not take Mario. And turn him into a movie yes. character. It yes. Was, let's take Mario and just make a movie about what Mario is. That's what I'm saying. And that's what they did a great job on. Yeah. So I, I completely agree with you. So hopefully you guys out there will agree and let us know. And maybe you'll uh, do this thing. What's it called? Uh, like, that's the one. share, and yeah. subscribe. Mm -hmm. Hey, in the comment section, what is your favorite Mario uh, Brothers game? Yeah. Music, whatever. I mean, what this, is your favorite Super Roper Brothers review thus far? Yeah, let us know what we're doing right, because otherwise we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. And what is your favorite Mario conspiracy? For example, where does it Mario's on the take in Mike Tyson's punch out? That's the reason why he stops counting when the bad guys are about to get up. You seen it before? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. I forgot Mario was the ref in that game. Oh, man. Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah. Um, Why you slow down, Mario? We're on to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mario. Also, and the other one uh, is that uh, Waluigi is not a bad guy. Waluigi never shows up in any games to conquer or capture anybody in the Mushroom Kingdom. He only shows up in sports games. <laughs> so he's like, hey, I'm not really digging your, uh, your so wait. Waluigi's the head of Mushroom FIFA. So he is a criminal. Anyway. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what you think about our conspiracies. Thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe. Once again, I am Otis Roper. I'm Brandon Roper. And together we are still the Super Roper Brothers. Now listen, they say, uh, I, 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 somebody can look this up, let me know if it's true. I heard that a statistic said that the most curse words that are used in English are used to, during a session of Mario Kart, like, believe it, per, per, they said per time spent doing, doing the Mario Kart. It's right play. up there with Monopoly. <laughs> I can only imagine. Like, you know, I'm just, cause, you know, 435. Never, the one thing, like, was it, uh, what's the name, Dane Cook, I want to give credit. When Dan Cook said it's true, like every every game of Monopoly is the same, but just F this game. <laughs> <laughs> you hate <ain't> grandma! <laughs> just just break, up, you break up the family. The whole family. You got 20 minutes to win. It won't well, yeah. well, Now, our parents played Monopoly, but they, they, they oh, always said no, nah, man. When you listen, my father was a preacher, my uncle, or uh, who's They're both preachers, and they're playing Monopoly together, and I thought it was going to end in a fist fight, because there's so much trash was being taught. Well, you know, <laughs> we can't use this for the, for the show, but this needs to be a podcast. Please, please use the recording for this. Just put just, 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 it. Just put sound to it.